we're talking about Ublak today. Ublak, like we just talked about with the um, in the story, is sort of weird because it's almost sort of undefinable of what kind of subject substance it is. If you watched my video earlier that I posted earlier today, where we talked about what kind of like weird substance the Ublak is. Um, you saw what it looked like, and we're, when we make a little bit more, we'll have some more to show you. But first, before we talk about that, we're going to talk about something that's called the phases of matter. And we're going to demonstrate this with water. So you guys know about water, right? You drink it, you swim in it, it a bunch of different stuff with it. So, um, okay. Sorry, got distracted. And so you, so there's different ways that water can be, right? You can see water as a solid, a liquid, and a gas. Those are the main different phases of matter. So I'm going to quick, because I didn't want to get it out and have it start melting. I'm going to go grab you a solid piece of water. You guys think about what that will be while I'm gone. Think about it. I'll be right back. All right, you guys are all brilliant. I know you are. So you already knew what it was, which is a solid piece of water is what? It's ice, right? I'm gonna throw that in one of these cups. Actually, let's throw two pieces of ice in there. There's enough space, see? Ice, solid piece of water, which means you can hold it, you can touch it, all that kind of stuff. There's also a liquid piece of water, right? Which is water. So we're gonna pour that, so you can see what that looks like, into a cup. See, water. And then, so the gas part of water is steam, right? Which is sort of hard to see. So I'm going to quick do kind of fake it so that you guys can see this on the video. So I'm gonna grab some hot water. And if you remember my cloud video, you can kind of maybe see the steam coming off of this by yourself. Eh. I'm not that enthusiastic. Maybe. Can you see it kind of steaming out a little bit? Maybe a little. So I'm going to make it be a little bit more. If you saw my cloud video, we're going to do that again, where I put some cold into the hot. and you could see the steam coming out. Got it? Okay, so these are the different phases of matter that you can have. You can have a solid, which actually, this was the demo part that I was making for you guys, looks like this. All of the molecules of the solid are all tight and close together and they can't really move around a lot. So molecules are the elements that make up the what this is. So this is water, so it's H, hydrogen, and oxygen. So all of these are like the hydrogen and oxygen and, they're, and when it's ice in a solid, they're all really tight like that. See? So next, you have the liquidy one, right? Now this is obviously not a solid, right? You can't hold it in your hand, it drips right out. So that when you do that, this is what the molecules look like. Again, they're the same exact molecules, it's just how close together and how much they can move around. So this one, they can kind of move around a bit, but we can still contain them in something like this. So you can scoop up water and have it in a container. It's not gonna move around so much that it's gonna escape like that. Now the last one, which is that steamy stuff, is a gas. That looks like this. Can you see this? The molecules are really, really far apart from each other. See how far apart they are from each other? And they're moving around all the time. 
like this one shooting off in this direction this one's going up this one's going this so it is it's trying to escape all the time so this one when we put the steamy part on it again and try it again because we don't have a cover on it and it's just gonna come right out Kind of doesn't. I don't want to splash water all over, unfortunately. So that you can see how that works. So, but you can also tell that like the gas can sometimes move, like water can switch from one phase to the other. So if you're going to a gas, it's evaporation. Like if your water turns into a gas, that's called evaporation. And then, but if your what if I put this glass of water into the freezer, it's gonna freeze and become a solid, right? And that's called sublimation. And this is how like normal, what they call normal liquids work. That this is kind of the process that they will go through and normal liquids are liquidy. They pour, right? Here, I'm gonna pour this back in so you guys can see. See, they pour back and forth and look like this. I can't pick this up in my hand because it's going to drip right out. So what's cool about Oobleck is that it is a liquid and a solid at the same time, which is really cool. And it's kind of hard to do that um, in nature. You don't find it all the time. So we're going to make Oobleck right now. And I'm going to show you guys how to do it. And it's fun to play with because it's both a solid like this and a liquid like that. Okay. So what you need to make your oobleck is you need water and you need cornstarch. I'm going to move this guy out of the way for a second. So I already put some um, water in here and the to do it it's a really simple recipe because you can do um, you can make as much as you want like if you go online and you google oobleck or another name for it which is non neutron newtonian non newtonian fluid then you can see like people make pool sized amount of this like your pool your swimming pool that maybe you guys are all swimming in right now they can fill that with oobla. We're not gonna do that. We're just gonna do a little bit today. So, and I think I wanna make it be kind of festive-y. So I'm gonna turn it green like it is in the story, in the Bartholomew Coven story. So if you do that, then you need food coloring. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna pour some drips of I'm coloring in and I'm going you don't have to do this and honestly if you're making this at home and you don't want to make a giant huge mess I don't really recommend using the um, food coloring this is like a Miss Ann thing that she does to make it be cooler but then sometimes the parents come up to me and say Miss Ann it's gonna make a mess and I'm like yeah that's why we do it at the library so now we have basically green water right so that was a third a cup of water and so then to make the oobleck you need twice that amount to um, make the oobleck so I need two thirds of a cup of cornstarch so this is a third of a cup so I'm going to do two of these see and again cornstarch just is like the, it's like also like British people call it corn flour I'm gonna use my fork to just get it out a little so that was one in and here's the other one So you don't have to be perfect in your measurements. And actually, I'm going to mess it up a little bit on purpose for you guys because I want you to see what it looks like. 
I'm going to put a little bit of extra cornstarch in it. Not a lot, but a little bit. Because I want to show you how it's sort of weird getting it from its into its state. So I'm going to start stirring it up. I'm going to show you like a close up because you can see here, right, that um, it's kind of hard to get the two things incorporated. Ooh, it's a pretty good green color though. I'm pretty excited about that. So you kind you can see me having to have to work at it a little bit to get the water and the um, cornstarch to incorporate with each other. And again, if you're here watching and you're being quiet and that's all you want to do, that's fine. But if you want to throw a comment in, that's fine too. Either way, we're all good. Okay. Good. So you can see here that it's really still pretty much a solid. I can pick it up like this and it's still mostly a cornstarch kind of thing that's green. So what you have to do now is you can throw just a little bit more water into it. So like when you're making this, if it's like this and it's too much, like still too hard, if you can pick it up like this, this is not oobleck. This is just still mostly a solid. So what you want to do, I only want the hot water. Let me take some of the cooler water and it's a little, little bit at a time. Like you don't want to do a whole nother third of a cup. You just want to add like a teeny bit. See, that was teeny. And then when you're mixing it up, you can see it. Ooh, getting a little bit more liquidy. So when it looks like it's dripping, do you see? That's what we want it to kind of look like. I still think we might need to do a little bit more. Let me just mix for another half a second. Oh, Nancy's here. Hooray! Hi, Nance. I'm guessing that that's my fancy. My Nancy fancy. All right. I think we need... It's almost there. It's pretty good. But I'm just gonna do just a teeny touch more water. Cause you can go the other direction too where it gets to be like too watery. Okay, again, that was just a little bit. So someone in the comments says, I use cornstarch all the time in baking and cooking to thicken. Yeah, so you use, so I'm assuming that's Michelle says that she's, which Michelle is back from vacation. So hi, Michelle, back in the comments. Um, yeah, this is better. So you use cornstarch to thicken things, which is basically what we're doing. You're using cornstarch to thicken water. So if you make pies or gravy or something like that, ask your mom or mom, if you're watching this, talk to your kids about what you use when you thicken it. Okay, this is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. I'm gonna stick the fork in the hot water. You can see it now. <gasps> Ooh, almost tripped over the side. Did drip over the side a little. It is pretty drippy. Okay? And when I touch it, see how I put my fingers right into it? It drips off. Like this. One. If I just let my fingers like sink in. It just drips like that. Pretty cool, right? But if you, you can pick it up like this and you can hold it in your hands really tight. It's gonna, I don't know if I can hold it. Like watch, I'm rolling it in between my hands and it's not, as long as I'm keeping pressure on it like this, it's not loosening up and being liquidy. But as soon as I let the pressure go, it drips out like that. So it's pretty neat. So it's cool to play with. If you put enough pressure on it at one time, you can even walk over this. So again, I'm gonna try and keep 
constant pressure on this guy so that it, I can roll it into a ball and hopefully not fling ooh black all over my kitchen. But then as soon as I let it go, neat. It looks like the Bartholomew Coven's ooh black. I actually am pretty happy with it. I can pick up much of the contents of this whole bowl like this. And as long as I'm moving it back and forth, all good. But as soon as I let it go, it goes into nothing, into liquid again. So it's both a solid and a liquid at the same time. And this is stuff you can make inside your kitchen. Mostly everybody has cornstarch, so you can try this anytime. Parents, feel free to make it outside. Because as you can see, it's not the cleanest, but especially if you put food coloring in it, but it's pretty cool and fun to play with. And if you have anybody that has there, this is not always the best with some people that have sensory issues. Like if you don't like getting icky, Missan clearly doesn't have that problem. But if you don't like getting icky, this isn't for you. But some people really like this feeling, this drip being solid to liquid kind of stuff. I highly recommend. It's pretty fun. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this back just a little bit. Keep playing with it for another couple minutes while we talk about this stuff. So this ooh blacky thing is called, I kind of mentioned it before, is non neutronium neutronic um, liquid, non-neutronium liquid, which is, so it's named after that guy Newton. Remember him with the apple and the gravity? He also talked about liquids and said that liquids behave like the water did, where it slushes all around, it doesn't like get hard and then get soft like that. But, um, so they called, that's what he said. So it's all about this thing that's called viscosity. So that's how liquid something is, is how viscous viscosity is. So you can make this oobleck, which I do highly recommend because it's really fun. But there's also other, I bet, non-Newtonian fluids that are in your kitchen, or it's possible to change some of them into that, which I'm going to quick, rinse off my hands and I will tell you about the other ones because I want to pick them up and show you what ones I actually had in my kitchen. And you're going to be surprised as to what they are. Also, this gives you a chance to see that it comes off pretty quickly. See, that like took a second to just wipe that off. Doesn't stick on you forever. So another fluid like this, you could say, is honey because if anyone's ever had Chris I don't have crystallized honey right now I just have regular honey that I had in my house and it doesn't happen to be crystallized but if you kind of left it be open you could stir and stir and stir and stir your honey from a liquid or from a solid and it goes back to liquid form like this so that's another one of those kind of fluids and if you've ever had whipped cream, do you guys like whipped cream? I know a lot of you do because when we've played Pie Face, you're all about the whipped cream. Whipped cream is non neutronian because it goes from this solid or this liquid and you whip it really, really fast and it becomes whipped cream. Pretty cool. Another one is ketchup. Have you guys ever tried to get ketchup out of the bottle? Yep. Yeah, you have. Then it's when you squeeze it really hard or shake it, if you have not a squeezy one, then um, you that's when the added pressure, which is the same thing here that we're doing. This one is the more pressure you add to the ooh black, the less liquidy it gets. But this one, the more pressure you add to the tomato ketchup, the more liquidy it gets. Weird, right? Okay. So um, yesterday I got set up for this and I made 
some oobleck yesterday. Partially to show you guys what it looked like in that video, but also to show you what to do after you're done playing with your oobleck. Because you don't want to like, you can just throw it away after this. You totally can. But there's another thing that you can do. And I froze my oobleck. So now it's in a super solid state. And I'm going to grab it out of the freezer for you. I made a bunch of different colors. So I made like a yellow and a blue and a red. So if so then you can play with it later and you can paint and do especially if you put it in you can't really do that if you didn't change it into colors. But you can if you did. So I have a piece of paper that I'm just gonna throw down. And if we have to end this video, you can end it. You can put it on your, and I'll show you what it looks like later. You can also take these outside if you have a driveway or blacktop or anything like that. You can use these as chalk and they'll make all sorts of cool, it's kind of cool frozen chalk as they melt. And you can paint with these too. So I'm gonna paint a little bit on my piece of paper so that you can see. <laughs> how it looks or you can just like let it melt on there and they'll melt together and make all sorts of cool colors and we can talk about again which we've talked about I don't know almost every time we've done a Facebook live about when you mix the different colors what do they look like I didn't freeze the green one so we don't have green on this paper but you guys can see look it's kind of cool can make little cold crayons out of them. But again, they do kind of make your hands a little dirty. So if that's not your bag, fine. But also, do it outside. Your hands will be, you know, they'll get clean. Wash them pretty good when you come in. And here's my recommendation though too, is if you, um, if you do freeze these, you're gonna wanna get them out of the um, freezer before you uh before they start melting because then they're really promise you they're really hard to get out of the ice cube tray so if you just put them in ice cube trays there you can do that this one has blue on it now because my fingers are all blue and it starts melting pretty quick which is another phase of matter too we talked about evaporation and sublimation but when it goes from a solid to a liquid melting so you can see that it's pretty fun I might take some of these outside and leave them on our my I do have a small piece of black top and I'll show you I'll take a picture and show you what it looks like later so I'm just gonna say we're getting really close to being done if anybody has any other questions or thoughts or anything like that if you want to see what happens when I squeeze this I see how much it goes back to its non-neutronian form we'll see i think it mostly wants to go to a liquid because it's kind of melt the cornstarch and the water are melting at different rates but ooh, you can kind of see can you see how it's like sort of ooey gooey like that Oop, as it gets onto my kitchen floor that's okay everything's washable and you can see how it melts really fast, which is why you'd want to take it out of the ice cube trays as quickly as you can. So you don't really want to, you want to like kind of use brute force if they get stuck in there. Mine got stuck in there. And you can watch how this melts and how it acts. You can break them into smaller pieces. Mine just kind of did that when I got them out of the ice cube tray, but that's kind of a cool way too, because you can see when things melt at different rates. You can talk about phases of matter. <laughs> Look at all the science we're going on about today so let me see also you guys if you can avoid blue that's probably the best the blue really stains your hands <laughs> like blue black hands now okay we're coming up close to being at our half an hour so um you guys I miss you. I hope that you're having a fun time and you're getting to be able to be outside more. I'll show you my picture. 
where I'm just dribbling things on here before we get done. And um, we'll see you next time. Don't forget to check in with our Facebook page. You know it because you're on it right now, but it's Ontario Pub or um, Live on Ridge, Live on the Ridge, and our YouTube channel, Ontario Public Library, New York where there's links to that too. So you can see stories that I've done and all sorts of fun and cool stuff like that. And we are getting ready for summer. So there'll be more information about that stuff. So just, <laughs> oh yeah, of course the kids should be outside. Of course, it's really nice out. Watch later, I'm not missing much. You just get to see what I do later. So yeah, here's the picture that's just basically me melting stuff. See? It's sort of fun. So imagine that on your blacktop. Now also be aware this is white paper and you have blacktop so it's not going to show up quite this much but once it starts melting it'll show up more like um like chalk does. Again look at Miss Ann's hands. Oh what I go through for you guys. Look at this. But hi. Hi. So um, I think we're done for today. I will see you guys again next week or check in on me anytime or if you haven't seen all the videos Make sure you go back and watch some of them. I think I'm gonna start taking some of the Facebook um, Live raw videos off and putting up some of the edited versions that I did because they're not as much fun to watch where I'm like Put your comments down like all the time So last look here. We'll scoosh things up last look at the ooh black pick it up And drip it out. It'll be like our little outro. And I'll see you guys later. Oh, it looks cool with the blue in it too. Can you guys see? A little bit. <laughs> All right. Have a lovely rest of your day. Bye, you guys.
Some of you might have just shown up because it just turned um, to two. So we'll see if anyone, remember if you're just showing up right now, you guys, hi. I'm so glad that you're here with me, Miss Ann, today while we're making oobleck on this beautiful day. And if you um, want to throw something down in the comments to say, hey, to know, let me know that you're there. That would be great as I finish up making this demo card for you guys when we're talking about oobleck and different phases of matter. So yeah, just throw a comment down into the comment board if you if you guys are here and we can kind of chat for a minute. So I'm gonna wait to get 100% started until, um, you know, just a couple minutes, in case it's taking people a couple minutes to like refresh the page or do whatever. But I did finish my demo, so hooray for Miss Dan. But yeah, I, uh, Ooh Black again is from this book well, we're, we can talk about that for a minute um, before we get started, which is called Bartholomew and the Oobleck, and it's by Dr. Seuss, kind of. I mean, that's it, kind of what we call Oobleck. And actually, I was going to get the book for you guys to show you because I was in the library this week. Very exciting. I was in the library this week because we were having some meetings and talking about moving forward. And um, I was in the library and I was looking for it, but somebody has it out. Probably because right around when we closed, it was um, it was the it was around Dr. Seuss's birthday. So I bet someone had it out for um, the Bartholomew and the Black. But there are two Bartholomew books. And today, I'm sorry, you guys. I apologize. I once again have the camera facing forward so that I can see myself while I'm doing this because I want to make sure that um, that I can when I'm showing you guys demos that you guys can see what I want I want to hold up for you hey Michelle that's okay um, and so this so I have there's two bar thoughts so the letters are gonna be backwards again I'm really sorry but I Kind of judged it up and I thought that this would be kind of worth it so there's two Bartholomew books that Dr. Seuss has done and um, one that actually was at the library is Bartholomew, um, the 500 hats of Bartholomew Clubbins, which is really cool. So if you, when you go back, when we go back to the library and people can take out books again, I highly recommend these Bartholomew Clubbins books. They're kind of cool and different for um, Dr. Seuss. I really like them. So this one is, he has just like a million trillion hats. That's what this the other one is the one that I actually have. And so Bartholomew Cubbins is a, and it's the same character in both the two books, the Oobleck one, which I actually printed off the cover so you guys could see. Again, I'm sorry that the words are backwards, but this is what it looks like. And that right there is the Oobleck right there. So Bartholomew Cubbins in these two stories is um, like a page in a castle. These are kind of like set back in olden times. And the first one, this one is where Bartholomew Cummins has a lot of hats. You can read that one later. But the Oobleck one is where the king has decided that he is tired of all the kinds of weather that they have in his kingdom. Like he's tired of sunshine and he's tired of rain and fog and snow and pretty much any other kind of weather that you can think of. And so he asks the wizard that is at the castle if he can make him a different kind of weather. And he comes up with the oobleck, which is, again, this green stuff that is very, it looks very much like slime, but it isn't exactly slime. And it starts coming down from the sky and like wrecking their whole entire kingdom. And the king doesn't care because he's just so excited that he um, got a new weather. So, which is kind of doesn't work out for anybody in the end until the king has to realize that he made a mistake. So I really like that story. It's pretty cool. It might be, yeah, I think it's my favorite of the Dr. Seuss's. I mean, the Grinch does kind of come up there and One Fish, Two Fish is also fabulous. But um, I like, I think that the Oobleck story might be my favorite one. So whoever has it out right now, when we can start bringing stuff back to the library, make sure you bring it back so that we can share it with other people. Okay, I think that, what do we got? A couple minutes in. I think that we might um, get started with our Oobleck stuff. So I'm just gonna check and see. I don't think anyone else has thrown anything in the comments, but again, that's okay. We can always just, um, if anyone shows up or if you showed up 